in anti-money laundering space, working with the financial sector um, in this space over 14 years. And I have to say, for me, anti-money laundering is actually sexy. Yeah. It's actually, you know, it's, it's really different when you understand the flow of funds around the globe, how it is constructed. You really learn a lot about human behavior, human nature, government, how it is structured as well, yes? And you discover a lot of different jurisdictions, such as Vanuatu, Panama, Gibraltar, which you didn't hear before or you were not interested. Yeah? So I know that you have this in mind as well all the time when you are doing business. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you some, some of this flavor of my understanding of what's happening in the world right now in this slide. Before moving on, how many of you has actually cryptocurrency business in this? OK, quite a few. And how many of you are accepting Dash? OK, so I have to tell you one thing. You are probably in breach of anti-money laundry rules. So this is something which we're going to discuss. Right, you know, this is something, you know, we want our business to look like this, yes? You know, I'm also in this business, I'm also accepting payments, you know, our business should be like this, yes? So we are laying on the beach, we have a lot of money, you know, all the business is growing nicely, and we don't, we are not concerned with the risks. So we had a guy, Alexander Vinik, who was probably on his holidays um, in, Greek, in Greece. Probably laying on the beach, you know, thinking, you know, how the business is growing. BTC is growing perfectly. Yes, it's really nice business. It's happening. I'm enjoying my life. And he wasn't thinking at this time that effectively, when he was, you know, there, there was a number of companies and number of government officials working on his case, like FinCEN, IRS, U.S. Homeland Security, and a number of different. Um, government bodies. And suddenly, you know, his, his, his vision, this is my imagination, his vision went a little bit darker. Yeah? So it's not solar eclipse probably for him. It pro probably was the guys from Greek police and FBI, you know, stopping him there. And this is unfortunately how, how this guy works. This is what is happening, you know, as we speak. And I can assure you that after what happened with Vinik, we had a lot of business coming to us. Why? Let me just... We have a... Uh, okay, that's a, uh, that's a trick. That's a trick? No. Okay, so we have some technical problem. But effectively, you know, what I wanted to show you is um, there's a global remit of the regulators. Yes, and the impact of these regulators is quite, quite severe. And when you are doing business in cryptocurrency, you are immediately doing business in, um, internationally. Yes? You have different jurisdictions coming to your play. You have different clients from different jurisdictions. And you need to consider different regulations which are impacting your business. And it's not easy picture. It's not easy business to do. In principle, currently, when you compare this with the uh, current financial system, we have something between 2 to 36 trillion US dollars laundered annually. Of course, this is controversial, yes? I mean, what is money laundering? What is crime? Yeah? When these things are treated as, you know, criminal activity or not? But, for example, Vinik, was charged with 21 cases of money laundering. And he will probably be going to be spending a lot of you know, years in the prison. And this is something which is, you know, um, which is also impacting cryptocurrency business. Why cryptocurrency business? Because a lot of these funds at some point will be transferred to cryptocurrency space. Yes? And at this point, basically, you are suddenly in the sphere of, OK, what is happening basically with uh, with my business, how I can manage the risk associated with, with uh, money laundering. OK, every time, and I'm going to you know, stay with this picture until these things are loaded. 
I don't know, Prezi does not work here. I don't know what's happening, you know, so we have some technical problems. But value exchange, you know, so you can imagine in this corners basically being US dollar dash Bitcoin, right? And whenever you have exchange of value, being cryptocurrency, being different blockchain asset, being US dollar, you need to consider anti-money laundering, counter-terrorist financing rules. That's a standard. You know, if you think that, you know, if you are considering, oh, does it apply to me or not, maybe it does not apply to you right now. But the problem is, you need to do this historically once they kick off. But in most of the jurisdictions, even though it's not certain in terms of applications, you're going to have this, you know, anytime soon. Yeah, whenever you have, you have the, you know, the next slide, you know, this is what I remember. The next slide is basically when we put the map of uh, jurisdictions which are covered with the regulations or not. And currently you have Australia, US, which is, you, you are certain that AML is kicking off there. EU, European Union is basically something when you are, you're going to have this pretty soon. China, Russia, this is all over confusing. Right, so basically, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen pretty soon. And the, the interesting part is that you will not be able to hide from this. Yeah? Even if you are doing so, the case with BTCE was quite interesting in the way that it's in Russia. Yeah? So the guys were traveling not to US, so they're not stopped in the US. They were stopped in Greek, in Greece. So Greece was cooperating with them to actually deliver the guy. So this is, you know, that's why, you know, the impact, if you, even if you do this on the, you know, in the jurisdiction which is not currently regulating this, you have international exposure immediately. So this is when you, when you need to think about this kind of repercussions. And when you are thinking about, you know, so let me, you know, let me do this without, without slides, you know, so, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be happy without slides as well. So when you are doing this, this cryptocurrency transactions, yes, you need to think about a few things in your, uh, in your setup. KYC. Who knows what, it's K what KYC stands for? Know your customer. Very good. What does it mean for you? You need to understand who is your client. Yes? And this is what I see you know, from you know, dealing with a number of businesses, cryptocurrency businesses, banks, financial institutions. This is what typically it's easy to do. Yes? This is something which you are you know, doing this pretty well. The other part, which is you know, tricky, yes, it's the source of funds. OK, we got it. Yeah, so this is, we can skip this. This is the map which I told you, yes. So this is a pretty picture of international uh, environment. KYC, transaction monitoring, source of funds, written procedures, awareness training. So KYC, you know, I see you guys are doing pretty well. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Transaction monitoring, source of funds. This is something which is more tricky with cryptocurrency. Why? Because cryptocurrency, for you know, the beauty of it, is effectively you exchange transactions between peers. Yes? So the peer, when you have peer-to-peer -peer transaction, peer-to-peer -peer exchange of value, you have also peer-to-peer -peer risk exposure. And you need to understand this particular risk. If you are cryptocurrency uh, exchange, if you are e-commerce business, you're effectively doing this in the same way. So there's no middleman, typically. There's no middleman who is handling this for you. You are exposed to this directly. And this is completely different. Uh, and this is effectively what we are doing. Yes? So we, we are covering this aspect of transaction monitoring for you. We tell you, who is this guy? What is this guy profile, which is matching with your KYC analysis? Yes. We give you the information on the source of funds. So this is, you know, this is, you know, very important po point. Written procedures. This is something which you need to have as well. So if you are considering uh, anti-money laundering compliance, written procedures is a must. It's a starting point. Awareness training. This is something which you need to do as well. This is obligatory from the, you know, regulatory point of view. What can go wrong? Everything can go wrong. And I saw this in so many different 
you know, institutions, financial institutions, which are spending millions and millions and millions and millions on this, right? So that's fine. You know, this is happening. You know, I saw bugs in the system. You know, some of them were, you know, bugs. You know, some of them were real bugs. You know, but these are, you know, some someone who failed to uh, submit some reports to the regulators. So these things are happening. Yeah? What you need to do, you must be prepared for these guys. Inspection, regulators, FinCEN. Because this guy is going to come to you. At some point, sooner or later, they're going to come to you and they're going to ask how you're managing this risk. What are you doing in the space? How you are covering your different aspects of the, you know, KYC, transaction monitoring, and etc. and etc. So you need, to, you need to get ready for these guys. And you know, getting ready not always means you know, getting hidden, right? Or you know, not doing anything or anonymizing everything. So we see a lot of change you know, coming from, you know, from the industry. When we started the business, it was you know, a, one year and a half when we started you know, CoinFin properly. Yeah. So when we started this, it was like conversation of, why are you doing this? That's crazy. You know, we're all about you know, libertarians, you know, anonymous, and etc. Right now, these guys who are you know, the biggest opponents for us are coming to us and say, listen, you know, help us. You know, help us with transaction monitoring. Help us with AML. Help us with convincing banks to open accounts for them. So which is, which is happening as well, because we are in the process of onboarding a number of, of banks financial institutions to provide uh, assistance for you. Accounts, yes, for Dash transactions, for Bitcoin transactions, for Ethereum businesses, yes, so, or ICOs are coming to us, yes, saying, listen, we want to cash out at some point, yes, how we can cash out? You know, we need bank account, and nobody wants to provide us a bank account. Because these guys, you know, banks, you need to understand, you know, what's happening on their side. It, they have the same risk. They have the risk of you being a client. So they need to be able to manage this risk. Monitoring stupid. Very important part. As I said, you need to understand, you need to build a system, right? You need to analyze what are the source of funds, what is the flow of transactions. With, if someone is using mixers, what is the degree of use of these mixers? Is? And you know, don't don't get me wrong. You know, I know hypocrisy around you know uh, money laundering. Yes? I know government aspect. You know why they are chasing us? You know, not doing their own work. So it's it's all about you know it's it's really the discussion which you need to have. But you need to agree at some point. If if I do business, uh, which want to benefit for many, 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 many years in the nice, nice and peace and quiet uh, way. This is something which we need to build in. And monitoring for cryptocurrency, it's you know, the most important part. I can actually, you know, I think we are on the bridge of changing, shifting something from KYC to monitoring. In banking sector, you know, banking sector is basically thinking about what we have on our you know, accounts, this is what we see. We don't see what other bank is doing. In cryptocurrency transaction, we see almost everything, which is beautiful. And we protect privacy. We, there's, you know, lack of anonymity. That's true. But this is something which, you know, that the paradigm of compliance is shifting to monitoring. And monitoring, this is what we do. Yeah? This is what we are providing. And we know that we are niche in this way, but we are, you know, professional in this way. We are the only company which is providing this for Dash, for example. Yes. And we are proud to, to be party of this. How it works? You know, so let me give you some flavor. I hope it's going to work. Um, let me give you some flavor of the system and some commentaries as well. So this is something which we build for, you know, typically for you know, banks or financial institutions. We have uh, so-called scenarios. So we have around 200 different scenarios which analyze the data in a number of different, for looking for different aspects. So you see, after the scenarios are applied, we have the results, yes? We, the the red, red indicators actually addresses and clients. If you click on the report, you basically have the history of, of this transaction, of this uh, address, 
Yeah, so you can see. And these are the different you know, triggers, basically, which provides us with, with different flavors and different aspects of this, of this client, of this address. Then you can see, you know, when you put the panel, basically, you have individual companies, you can see this transaction flow. Uh, you can see, basically, where the funds are being transferred, how it is being transferred. Yeah, so you have this kind of slightly investing. And this is something which is really cool. Yes? This is something which we, you know, when we present this in Japan, the guys just love this. Because they're afraid of China, North Korea. For them, it's huge risk. So if we are able to put you know, or attach addresses of their clients even you know, to, to this particular uh, geographical location, in this way, we can show, them, show this on the map in the real life uh, time. So this is something which is really simple, really. What we want to do, what we want to achieve for the market is to make your life easier. Right? You need to have one person in your compliance team who is responsible for AML. We don't want you to grow you know, in the same way. Because I mean, what you are being asked at the moment, it's, it's tricky, but what you're being asked is you are young industry, but you need to comply with the same standards as banks equal standards. So, and, you know, this, you know, banks have enormous amount of money to put this. Yeah? It's like, actually, we want to create a competitive advantage for them. But we actually can, you know, tackle this problem with our solution. Because this is something when we come and say, listen, you don't have better systems than we. This is something which we can handle for you. Personal freedom and innovation need to coexist with general rules of wider society. This is what we think about what's happening. This is how we are fitting into it. We don't want to make your life more difficult. We don't want to chase you. We don't want to you know, exclude money from the market. We just provide you with information. That's, that's what we do. We provide you with the, with the information. You manage your risk. But it needs to, you know, you need to understand that you need to apply these rules because there's a lot of bad guys around the world, yes? Drug traffickers, human traffickers, weapon traders, child pornography. You know, and you can argue that some of these you know, are not criminal activity per se, but some of them could harm society as well. So that's why you know, AML, it's not an you know, empty statement. I think there's you know, really a lot of you know, meaningful uh, applications of anti-money laundering counter-terrorist financing in the world. And this is what we want to help you, and this is how we see ourselves fitting into this, uh, this organization. Okay, my time is coming to the end. Questions, answers? That's a very good question, and you know, so we see private, I mean, if, depends on the amount, depends how you structure the transactions, yes? I mean, and depends uh, if you're, it's like cash, basically, you know, you, you need to, I mean, it's very similar in terms of, you know, application as cash. If you come to the, bank, to the bank and say, you know, I have millions in cash, you know, there's always question mark where these funds are coming from, yes? So private cent is exactly the same way, yeah? I mean, if we say, if we see uh, not private cent in the Dash, uh, Dash network, we can analyze and we can say, say this source of funds in, is matching your profile, yeah? This sort of funds is legitimate and it's gained over time, so it's, everything looks, looks fine. Private send is, you need to explain this. This is something which you basically need to go and, uh, unless this is a small amount, unless this is a business which you are secure, you know, so this is something which you, which you can manage, but there's a way to manage this, you know. It's, it's very similar to cash at some point. Yeah. But thanks for this question, it's, it's really, you know, it's really typical for Dutch community. <laughs> We just analyze information provided in the blockchain, right? We see the transactions, yeah? we, we put external sources of data, and we give this information to you. I mean, we, we are blockchain agnostic in many ways, you know? So we, we don't care about, you know, what is the blockchain. Whether this is private, you know, Dash, Bitcoin, Ethereum, of course, Dash, Dash is the best, yes. <laughs> but it's, it's basically, you know, something which we, which we don't mind. I mean, there's a lot of sources, yeah? I mean, uh, sometimes you connect it with the, with the companies. Sometimes you see this on the, you know, uh, transaction connected with these companies. So you, you have, you know, many ways of identifying. But, you know, the, the geolocation part is the most difficult. 
And this is something which probably is futuristic a little bit. Yeah? But we can, you know, we can provide you with some of the data we find. And we see companies you know, which want to be you know, analyzed by us, you know, which want to be transparent in this way. We want to be transparent in this way, yes? So I think, you know, there's a choice always, and this is beauty because you, you have this choice, yes? Guys, it was a pleasure to, you know, speak to you. I mean, sorry for the, you know, little bit problems, but...